Of course, the first successful conquistador was a Norman. I mean, these were the same former Vikings that France feared so much that they just gave part of France to them. From their home base in Normandy, they conquered Sicily, the British Isles, South Italy, parts of the Balkans, and briefly North Africa. Jean de Bethencourt IV was born in 1362 in Normandy, which at that time was a part of France. His father was Jean de Bethencourt III, although this Jean de Bethencourt IV would have no recollection of him. He had died in the Hundred Years' War at the Battle of Cocherel in 1364. Jean de Bethencourt IV was only two years old. That following year, his family castle, called Grainville, was demolished by King Charles V of France, as his family could no longer afford the upkeep. The Bethencourt appeared to fade into obscurity until 1377. In this year, 15-year-old Jean de Bethencourt IV becomes squire to the Duke of Anjou, a man named Louis, also known as the son of King John II of France and brother to King Charles V of France. For the next decade, the Norman remains in his service, and after 10 years, he would be promoted to serve Duke Louis of Orléans in Touraine. He was another second son of the King of France. However, instead of becoming a squire, he would become the Chancellor to Louis in 1387. This promotion showed that Bethencourt had reached at least a half-decent education, as this job required a great deal of reading and writing. Bethencourt was a landless noble, but working for the Brothers of France? Well, that does have its benefits. Shortly after his appointment to Chancellor to Duke Louis of Orléans, Bethencourt was re-given the ruined castle of Grainville by his brother, King Charles VI of France. From 1387 to 1390, Bethencourt spent his time rebuilding his family castle and serving Duke Louis of Orléans. One day in 1390, Duke Louis called upon Bethencourt to join him on a crusade. These crusades weren't heading off to the Holy Land. Instead, they were going to North Africa. Genoan merchants had been experiencing a problem with the Barbary pirates of North Africa. To solve this problem, the Genoans began looking for outside help. Many French merchants fell victim to the same Barbary pirates. An alliance was made, and a crusade called. Genoa agreed to give 60 ships and supply the French if they supplied the army. On July 1st of 1390, Jean de Bethencourt and 5,000 knights of French and English origin set sail on Genoan galleys. Their destination was the fortress of Madia. Madia, located in modern-day Tunisia, was at this time a part of the Tunis Sultanate and a haven for the Barbary pirates. After a few weeks at sea preparing for their invasion, they landed near Madia. The Genoan navy began a blockade at sea, and the French army began a siege on land. Disease filled the siege camp, and to make matters even worse, the Crusaders couldn't even make proper siege engines. One thing the Genoans did not supply to the French was a proper amount of building materials. Missing the main resource that you need for sieges, the French siege struggled along for another two months. In October, the Sultan of Tunis arrived to relieve the siege of Madia. After being informed of the French landing, Sultan Ahmed Hafsid III gathered his own army and looked to his neighbors for help. Neighboring Algerian dynasties would end up giving soldiers to Sultan Ahmed. With his force numbering some 40,000, he now confidently marched to put a swift stop to this crusade. The Sultan avoided open battle, but set up his own camp close to the French one. From here, Sultan Ahmad started sending a small bands of guerrilla fighters to fight the French. Day by day, these small bands of warriors retook the Tunisian countryside until the crusaders were contained to only their camp. The closed-in French now began using the little building supplies that they had to barricade themselves inside their camp. Inside this makeshift fort, Jean de Bethencourt and the French army were forced onto the defensive. With his enemy backed into a corner, Sultan Ahmad started his own siege. Ahmad ordered for an assault on the French camp. The hastily built fort stood strong, and the army was forced to end the assault. Despite this small setback, Sultan Ahmad still clearly held the advantage. In mid-October, the French army made one last-ditch effort to take Madia Fortress. This, too, was repulsed, and the French began to look for an exit. A treaty to end hostilities was quickly negotiated, and the French reboarded the Genoan ships that had brought them there. On one of these ships, Genoan sailors began talking about a faraway land they had visited that was ripe for conquest. 
The Norman senses of Jean de Bethencourt began to tingle. He had already fulfilled the long Norman tradition of going on crusade. Now he wanted to fulfill the other long Norman tradition of conquering an island and becoming a king. Bethencourt returned to France in late October of 1390. In early 1391, Duke Louis of Orléans released Bethencourt as chancellor, allowing him to return to his estate at Grainville. Bethencourt continued to rebuild his castle and his wealth. In 1392, he married a French noble named Jean de Fayel. For unknown reasons, the couple never had children. Bethencourt enjoyed the life of French nobility for the next decade. He eventually grew tired of this. His Norman wanderlust overcame him. The tales told to him by Genoan sailors about an archipelago called the Canary Islands began to reemerge. In 1401, Bethencourt sold all of his land, including Grainville Castle, and began to take out loans. Bethencourt used this money to buy ships, sailors, and warriors. His retinue was small, around 200 good fighting men. However, they were sufficiently armed and well-seasoned. One of the men to join Bethencourt was his longtime friend, Gaddafir de La Salle. Gaddafir was a veteran of the Hundred Years' War and a crusader. More specifically, Gaddafir fought in the Baltic Crusades and in the Madia Crusade of 1390, alongside Jean de Bethencourt. Among the mixed crew of French knights was also two Franciscan priests ready to convert the locals. He also had brought with him two Guanche natives that would act as guides and interpreters. Bethencourt petitioned for the King of Castile, Henry III, to endorse the expedition. Henry III was delighted and more than happy to allow Bethencourt to conquer the Canaries in the name of Castile. So it is, on May 1st of 1402, Jean de Bethencourt set sail from France. They sailed around the Iberian Peninsula until reaching the port city of Cadiz. This was their last supply stop before reaching the Canary Islands. Bethencourt employed brave warriors. The same cannot be said of the 80 sailors that he hired. A group of 27 of them refused to sail into the Atlantic, fearing the turbulent waters of the ocean. The remaining 53 sailors and warriors continued on to the Canaries. They reached Lanzarote, the northernmost of the Canary Islands. He wasn't the first European that had come to establish a foothold on the island. Nearly 100 years before him, in 1312, Genoan explorer Lancelotto Malicello constructed a small fort that he would come to live in for the next 20 years. During Bethencourt's initial reconnaissance of Lanzarote, he discovered the ruined fort of Lancelotto. During Lancelotto's time on the island, he managed to form a peaceful connection with a Guanche king named Zonzimas. Zonzimas was long dead. His grandson, however, named Guadarfia, was king when Bethencourt arrived. The Guanche king gave little resistance to Bethencourt and his 200 armor knights. By late 1402, Lanzarote Island was firmly under the control of Bethencourt, although Guanche revolts would continue over the course of the following decades. With this first conquest of success, Bethencourt returned to Castile. A very happy King Henry III granted Bethencourt more resources and men if he promised to keep conquering in the name of Castile. During this return trip, the Pope also recognized Bethencourt as the king of the Canary Islands. Make no mistake, he was not an autonomous king, but subservient to King Henry III of Castile. With replenished supplies and a fancy new title, Bethencourt returned to the Canaries in 1404. During his absence, the original 200 knights that he had brought with him began dividing themselves into two distinct groups. The Norman members of his crew, under the leadership of Jean de Bethencourt's old war buddy, Gaddafi de La Salle, and his nephew, Maceo de Bethencourt. Then there was the Gascon part of his army, led by Berthen de Berneville. Shortly after Bethencourt left for Castile, these two factions began fighting one another. The Guanche, unsure of which group of foreigners they should follow, began to take sides. A civil war broke out, and hundreds of Guanche and scores of Frenchmen on both sides died. The Gascons under Bertrand de Berneville wanted to leave the islands while they had a horde of loot and captured Guanche slaves. Unsurprisingly, the Norman members were only fighting for their right to continue fighting. They wished to resume conquering the island chain, moving on to conquer the next closest island, Fuerteventura. Berneville and the Gascons then took control of the boats and left Fuerteventura. 
leaving Gaddafi and his Normans deserted on an island at the edges of the known world. Gaddafi and his small retinue nearly starved. Luckily, one of the boats taken by Berneville returned to rescue the Normans, taking them back to the relative safety of Lanzarote Island. When Bethencourt returned to the island in 1404, he was greeted by Gaddafi, who advised him to conquer Fort Fifanchora as he had tried. After Bethencourt restored order among his soldiers, he then sailed to the island. The Guanche on this island offered a much stiffer resistance than those on Lanzarote had. However, in 1405, after a year of fighting, the Guanche on Fort Fifanchora surrendered, the kings of the island agreeing to be baptized, then converted to Christianity. When Gaddafi de la Salle was told that he was not to become the ruler of Fort Fifanchora, he decided to take his case to the camp of Castile. Gaddafi took a ship back to Castile. King Henry III reconfirmed Jean de Bethencourt as ruler of all the islands that he could conquer. Having went through a lot of trouble and having nothing to show for it, Gaddafi returned to France, never again returning to the Canaries. With another island conquered, Jean de Bethencourt also returned to King Henry III. He once again granted him supplies and men to colonize and continue conquering the Canaries. With Lanzarote and Foyfa Vinchota under his banner, the king of the Canary Islands looked to the other five remaining islands that had yet to be conquered. The next closest island was Gran Canaria. However, this island was heavily populated and would be a challenge to subjugate. This led Bethencourt to island hop all the way to Hero Island. This was the furthest west of all the islands, but was also the smallest of the seven and far less populated than Gran Canaria. Compared to Foyfa Vinchota, this island was easily conquered in just a few months. Most of the Guanche on Hero were enslaved and sold by Bethencourt. Having conquered three of the main seven islands, Bethencourt had a strong foothold over the archipelago. This was, however, not enough for him. He started to organize a new invasion, this time targeting Gran Canaria. In 1407, on the south of the island, his army made landfall. Immediately, they met a stiff resistance, but still, they continued on. They ventured further inland, but soon fell victim to a massive Guanche ambush. After suffering heavy casualties, Bethencourt retreated back to his ships. For the time being, the conquest of the Canaries was halted. For the next seven years, Bethencourt would consolidate his island kingdom, making periodic supply runs back to Castile on a few occasions. In 1414, he left the Canary Islands for good leaving his nephew, Maceo de Bethencourt, in charge of the islands in his absence. Jean de Bethencourt returned to Normandy, having fulfilled his Norman duties of conquering and enslaving. Upon his return, Bethencourt opened a dye manufacturing plant. The rare, oracle dye found in abundance on the Canaries supplied this new business venture. For the next four years, the aged Bethencourt returned to a peaceful life in France, his wealth continuing to grow in that time. In 1418, Jean de Bethencourt would die at the age of 56. His title, King of the Canary Islands, was passed on to his nephew, Maceo de Bethencourt. Over the course of his life, Jean de Bethencourt returned his family to prominence, went on a crusade, and became a king. He was a gambling man, though, selling his lands in France to finance an uncertain conquest of new lands. His mostly triumphant conquest cemented him as the first successful Spanish conquistador. Like I said before, of course, just, just, just of course the first successful conquistador was a Norman. How did I not see this coming? 